Hi there, hope all of you are doing great here on YouTube. It is Sunday evening, I believe, like March 22nd or 23rd, 2009, when I'm taping this. And uh, I'm going to talk about the cross tonight. And this is my cross, and there's something I like about this cross, and I'm going to tell you that in a few minutes. So first of all, did you hear the news the other day that the Pope, Pope Benedict, may visit to Israel. Did you hear about that? The rabbi of the Western Wall has said that it is not proper for the Pope to come to the site wearing a cross, which the Pope wears to all public appearances. And he's slated to visit the Western Wall in, on May 12th after a meeting with Muslim religious leaders. So we'll be, it'll be interested to see what happens there. Stay tuned for the, uh, more on that, you know, perhaps at another time. Now, I believe the rabbi is wrong for telling them, asking or telling the Pope he can't wear his cross. And to find out why I think the rabbi is wrong, go to my faith-based blog, which is, a, which is Billy D. Teacher at wordpress.com. Okay, and you can read about my opinion. But However, today I have, big, I have something else and dip a fish and bigger fish to fry. I want to look at and show you from Scripture how some churches and some individuals are not using the cross properly. First of all, let's look at Galatians 6.14 in the Bible. Here is Galatians 6.14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the warded has been crucified to me, and I to the warded. And then Philippians 4, Philippians 2, 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. Okay, just go a little more, a little bit more in the Bible. And here is Philippians 2, 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So what are some ways that churches and individuals misuse the cross? Well, the cross has been used as a sign of hate. People like the Ku Klux Klan will, you know, use the cross to burn in front of homes of African Americans or Jewish people or others. The cross was never met as a sign of hate. It is a sign of love. Romans 5.8 says, a verse I just love, says, But God demonstrates his own love in this, yet, yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, let me give that fully, full justice by reading that from Scripture. I said just for men, wait. Okay, here is Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The cross is a sign of love. It takes love to go and to go to take the death penalty and die for someone who committed horrible crimes and sins, which we all have. It takes love to do that while you did not do the wrong while you were sinless and that's what Jesus did for us so the cross is a sign of love people have used it as a sign of hate and that is an injustice to the cross people think by another uh, misuse of the cross is people think by wearing a cross it brings good luck they worship the cross as a good luck sign Exodus 20 verse 4 says Exodus 24. This is one of the Ten Commandments. So it was says in verse 4, Exodus 20. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on, on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not, and verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. We are not to worship anything but Jesus Christ. We are not to worship anything but God. We're not to worship, quote, the cross and use it as a good luck symbol. Oh, I have good luck if I just pray to this cross. No, no. Okay? Also, peep, another misuse of the cross is people are trying to make the cross look beautiful. A beautiful thing. It was not a beautiful thing. The cross was not, the cross was a purpose with punishment. And to see more on that, let's look at Colossians 3.20. Okay, 
Okay, Colossians 3.20 here. Uh, let's try 2.20 maybe. Yeah, 2.20. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this word, why as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? That's not right either. Let's try it, uh, let's see, 120? Sorry about this. Divine human. Yes, that's it, 120, Colossians 120. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The cross was a, a punishment. So I, I understand why people maybe want to make the cross out a beautiful thing and decorate a cross at Christmas time, and I don't mean to condemn anyone who's done that, but we must keep in mind the cross was purpose of the cross was punishment. It was the way they executed people in biblical times. And I tell you what, if I had to pick between being executed by the electric chair, the shot, that they give you, or some other way, the cross will be the last thing I would pick, because that went on for days. It was agony. It was painful. It was not a beautiful thing or a beautiful ceremony. It was an awesome thing the Lord did for us, suffering on that cross. But the purpose of the cross was punishment. Okay? Then, so the cross, we don't necessarily, is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing what Jesus did for us, yes. But the cross itself was not a beautiful thing. Then finally, the biggest, I believe, misuse of the cross by churches and people is to show that Jesus is still, show crosses with Jesus still on it. And the thing I like about this cross and all crosses like it is Jesus is no longer there. Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible tells us. He went to the cross to take the punishment for our sin and was put in a tomb, but the tomb and the grave could not hold him because God the Father wrote had him rise from the dead. So don't leave the cross. Don't leave Jesus on the cross. Don't put a Jesus on the cross. Because Jesus rose from the dead. He is no longer on the cross. He is alive. As that, to that song goes, the tomb's been rolled away. He's alive. He's alive again. And he, that's what makes him, and that's why we celebrate Easter, or as I call it, Resurrection Day. And that's what makes our God the God Jesus differ from all the other gods and everyone else. Everyone has a birth date when they were born. And everyone has or will have a death date. A date when their earthly life came when their earthly life came to an end. When their earthly life came to an end. But the resurrection the resurrection is when Jesus rose from the dead. So remember that. That is the biggest mistake the churches make is that Jesus is still on the tomb. Post your thoughts and make your comments on this video. Thanks. Until next time, I'm Billy. I'll see you.